Hey guys, so this is another testimonial from one of my clients, Kyle. Um, and we worked together a while back, like what, two and a half years ago? Well, it probably started three and a half years ago, but went on for about a year, right? Yeah, it was a while. And then I got, you know, pretty busy with some work stuff. And mm -hmm. you graciously let us take a little bit of a break and come back on the program. Yeah. Um, and then I remember giving you the advice that kind of changed your trajectory and I know it took some time for it to set in. Like we finished the coaching and then you, and then you and I both were like, okay, you just need to go practice it and then to kind of implement it. And then it took about, I think it was like a year later when you hit me up and you said, Hey, I finally did it. And it finally hit, hit. and it, you know, that's a mixture of, um, it could be stubbornness. It could be that you didn't realize how simple it was. Maybe like you were overcomplicating it, I think was the main part is you thought it was something more complicated. And I just kept trying to hit you like it was just the fact that, um, you know, you. so basically his problem was, um, I mean, he has the advantage. He's a good looking guy. And a lot of people would think that that would make things easy for him. And in some ways it got attraction, but he actually, you went through a pretty bad dry spell, right? You went through a dry spell for like, it was a while, I think, where you weren't, you didn't get laid, you know, and you would think that that wouldn't happen. And you had a lot of chances. I mean, you're educated, you know, you're, you're doing pretty well professionally. You got some good looks. You're, you're not, you know, a fucking psycho. You're a nice guy. You have good communication skills i mean so you had everything in your favor you were getting a lot of attraction but you were having trouble turning that into action so the biggest thing is you were getting these texts that were like basically hey i don't feel any connection i don't feel uh you were basically getting friend zoned and this was confusing the hell out of you because they were giving you all the signals of the fact that they were attracted to you and they would even come over um but you just kept getting this text even after what you thought was a pretty nice date, a nice interaction. So what I figured out was, well, I think that you have all this attraction, but you're just not taking action. And you were confused. It's like, well, why is that making her just leave, you know, why wouldn't she, you know, still stick around, maybe take things a little bit slower. It, it's kind of confusing to think, why do I have to move faster for you to like me? It doesn't make any sense. And what I was trying to explain to you was that, look, they like you so much and they're so attracted to you that they actually start to feel a little insecure if you're not reciprocating on that level. And my solution was, dude, just move fast, like invite them home first date, which was something that was in your mind, almost not, not impossible, but it was unlikely. Cause I know you had in your mind, like, no, you know, there's no way she's just going to come home within like 30 minutes or an hour. And I'm like, no, seriously, try it. And then I remember a few times you did start to do it and then you would have a girl back and then you guys would make out. I remember the girl in the elevator. That was the one, like you tried to kiss her and she was like, I don't know, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then she left and you're like, okay, I guess I lost it. And then you're in the elevator walking her out and she just spontaneously kisses you. Pounces on me. Yeah, yeah. just pounces on you. And you're like, okay, <laughs> now you're pouncing on me? Not when we were like on my couch? Like, what the fuck? This doesn't make any sense. And then she like very excitedly after making out with you leaves and you're like, okay, so I guess she likes me. And then she never sees you again. Right? And, and you know, you try to text her and you're like, this doesn't make any sense. It all seems backwards. Right? And basically what I explained happened was is these girls like you so much. They're so attracted to you for a lot of different reasons. But you're not just doing the work and, and just pushing for the sex. So they are stuck like they feel like you do. Like, OK, does he like me? Does he not like me? Does he like me? Does he not? And it sounds so, so stupid to anyone probably listening on the outside. But you would never understand that until you've been in a situation where you're a really high value guy and girls like you a lot. But they have their own insecurities and they have their own ego issues. And and so they're going to act weird and erratic and hot and cold. And then they're going to auto reject themselves and just, you know, say, OK, you know what? They would think you're a fuckboy, of course. That would be another thing, right? And so then you would never see them again.
But then the simplest solution was actually the the thing that worked was just move quickly. If you're if they're gonna think you're a fuck and you kept fighting against the fact that they thought you were a fuck boy. So the moment you just embraced it and started acting like a fuck boy, you started getting results, right? Yeah, one hundred percent. So you know, I still kept that like side of me that's good at conversation and you know engages the girl really genuinely at that gets to know her as well. I just paired it with you know moving faster. And, you know, mm-hmm. being a little bit more edgy with more touches and things like that, just trying to, like we talked about, just kind of pushing the boundaries almost to see, you know, where the limit would be at. And I never found the limit. They yeah, like okay how with, how fast yeah. are they okay with me moving? You know, like 15 minutes into meeting her, 30 minutes into meeting her. And, and you realize it's not about time. It's about connection. 100%. Exactly. And just, you know, making those moves, like you said. Yeah, that was, that was very accurately summed up. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, what do you think looking back and reflecting on, you know, the coaching, I I think I kind of nailed it on early on trying to tell you, there were some other things like, um, you were trying to tease girls and I was like, that doesn't work for you because they already like you so much. Why do you feel the need to tease them? So in your mind, why, oh, why do you, teasing? yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why do you think you were teasing? Like, what was your mindset? Like, what did you think you had to do? It was, it's just the classic, you know, value trap that a lot of guys get into, right? I kept thinking, oh, I need to be more cool, more attractive and and keep swinging towards that way. Not really understanding. I knew the attainability problem. I mean, that was some of the first material I discovered with you guys before I started the coaching, but I still just didn't fully internally grasp it because all my life, you know, throughout middle school, high school, even college, it was all about get more physically fit, play the guitar, do all these cool things and keep, you know, too value, too much value. How, how is that ever a problem? Yeah. Um, and, and it really, it really can be. And that was the biggest thing that I had, like the biggest mental block for a while. And that's why I was like doing those things. Mm-hmm. So, so you, like you said, that's a good way to put it, the value trap. Like you thought it's just a one dimensional game. I just have to become more valuable. And when I'm at the top, girls are just going to be so infatuated with me that they're not going to be able to resist and they're just going to like throw themselves at me. But what you found was it was almost the opposite. Like you would see a little bit of that, but then there would be a total shift to to cold. And it in the model of just be as hot as possible, it doesn't make sense. It, It almost feels like you're actually having the opposite effect because you actually have a friend. It was a roommate, right? He was really good with girls, but he wasn't good looking. He wasn't this and that, but he Super just was fat. He was fat. Yeah. He was fat. Like everything yeah. that you were taught is not attractive in traditional society, but yet he was pulling more pussy than you were. So what do you, That's what, what made me go to you for coaching? I was like, okay, something's really fucked here like um, yeah. <laughs> that was way off with how yeah. I, i'm supposed to view this yeah <laughs> so look now that you know what you know what was he doing right like why was he succeeding dude he was just being bold and making boots that's literally what he was doing just like inviting girls like straight over like not even really doing public dates or anything like that and just like you know getting him on the couch talking for a little bit and then just you know moving him to his bedroom like literally just pressing forward and making moves and these girls were compliant with them. Yeah. Yeah. And you were his roommate. So you actually got to see this stuff. Like you actually got, I got, to, I got to see it. Yeah. yeah. Like you would, you would, you would walk out of your room and he's got another girl on the couch and you're like, what the fuck is going on? You know, like eight and one was like a nine. <laughs> yeah. Just like really hot girls. And then you were like, you know, focusing on your career, going to the gym, you know, this and that. And you were like, you were getting attraction, but you weren't getting these results. I had some good, I actually had some decent results that year, but like, I it was still struggling. Like I was, I was having to do a lot of hard work, a lot of like pulling out my text game sucked back then, but I was still trying to like pull out everything I could to, to make things happen. It just looks so effortless for them. So that's another reason I knew, like I had some decent success that year. Um, but uh, I, I was still like, geez, this is, something's wrong with my model. Yeah. Yeah. Something was, something wasn't right. And, and the biggest thing was the, you know, attainability is a word that we use a lot. Um, you could also think of it as, um, 
you know, there actually wasn't enough of a connection, but what girls consider a connection, like you got the text, Hey, I don't feel like there was a connection. And you were like, but we had a great conversation and everything. But what we don't understand about connections is that in man to women relationships, right? Like you hang out with a buddy and you had a good time. You had a good time. And that's it. But with a woman, there's that added component of, hey, I'm a man, you're a woman, and we have you know these two parts that fit together like Lego blocks. So that's a pretty important distinction. And so when we have a connection, the sex is what connects it. And if you don't finish it off with that, or at least a step in that direction, but if like your connection is really high and then you don't finish it off with sex, she's going to look back and feel like there was something missing. Now, she's not going to know, right? She's not a dating coach. She's not going to say, hey, Kyle, you know what? I really thought, you know, I really was turned on, but then you didn't, like, press the X button at the right time to escalate to sex, and therefore I wasn't emotionally set. You know, she's not going to be saying that to you. The only thing she's going to be thinking was, I was there, I had a nice time, but now I kind of feel disappointed. Something feels off. Something feels off. I must just not be connected with him. But really what's going on is she's got an ego. She's like, oh my God, he's probably such a fuck boy. Like, oh my God, da, 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 da. And then you just you just lose, but there's never an explanation of why. But there was obviously something deeper going on. But really at the end of the day, sex and connection with women are intertwined. And so that's why you were specifically, because they weren't necessarily saying, I see you as a friend. They were very the the, right. the, the yeah, phrasing. They wouldn't see me again, period. They yeah, see me again. If you're a friend, they they bring you. They still have friend value and whatnot. They still want to see you as that way. Yeah. It was just like a disappear. Yeah, they would just and and that at least is a move in the right direction because if you're just getting rejected, well, it means they did see me as a as an option for sex and then they rejected me. Whereas a friend, you're not even on the radar, right? So at least you right. were at least you were like in the running. But then it got canceled. Yeah. And the text was always really similar. Like they would always use that phrase, a connection, yeah. right? Copy they would, and paste. Yeah. yeah. Like AI. Yeah. So- yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it was almost like I remember seeing multiple texts, the same thing. And it's like, yeah, the same thing, different girl. I'll, I would send it over to you. And just Yeah. And there's no way they knew each other. They weren't planning. Like nope. we're going to, we're going to send Kyle this text and fuck with his mind. You know, they were all saying the exact same thing. But yep. what they don't realize when they mean connection, they mean dick in my pussy, <laughs> right? That's what they mean. Well, so can I add a, a point onto that really? Quick? Yeah, sure, really of course. Important that you helped with. So it's almost like I know what's better. I know more of what's better for them than they do themselves. Mm-hmm. So something I started doing kind of later on to it really did skyrocket my results. And you know, this won't help you get every girl, but it was, you know, I just wanted to keep the headache at bay as much as possible. I just started screening pretty hard for girls with hard rules. You know what I mean? And 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 so like like no sex in the act. first day, uh yeah. you know, I don't have sex before a relationship. Anytime she had like a kind of stronger personality about those things. Because I know in my case, in my situation, that'll always yield in the pretty much almost every time that will yield in the girl being like, yeah, you know what, I didn't really feel it. And it's like, well you didn't feel it because you stopped the thing from happening that would have made you feel it. Yeah. Um, and the reason I was able to screen, by the way, was something that you helped me out with. You were like, there's a period where I was like trying to play the whole like teenage game of being coy with girls and don't talk. You can't talk about this stuff directly. I just started doing it and you encouraged me to do that. I'm just up front with them. Like, you know, Hey, do you have any hard rules or, you know, if we have a, if we connect, are you cool with, you know, possibly coming back for, you know, a movie, wanted a movie afterwards. Like I just started just talking to some of the chicks and it, it worked out. They were totally cool with having that conversation. When um, would you bring it I up usually? That, yeah. At what point of the we day would you bring it up? So beforehand, like I would precede it. We would be oh, you would, like you would do it even yeah. like over the texts? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. so let me get this straight. You're like, hey, Sarah, nice meeting you. Hey, Kyle, nice meeting you. Blah, blah, blah. Hey, how about Friday at... um you know, seven, we'll meet for whatever. Yeah, sure. By the way, if we, if you feel like we have a cool connection, you know, are you like down to hang out more after? Yeah, I would word it a little, like a little bit more 
you know, in a way that I was a little bit more socially savvy than the way I first just described it just now, but I would do it like, you know, Hey, let's, let's go grab some, you know, ice cream. I got a place right across the street and then come back for a movie afterwards if we're feeling it. Okay, sure. Yeah, sounds good. <laughs> um, so I would precede it because they would come out on these dates without these expectations. That, that was even a possibility. So I said, okay, I need to start like seeding this as, a, as an idea. Um, mm-hmm. And again, mm-hmm. I don't know if this is something that worked, like it's correlation and causation, but it definitely did work. Um, in the, the, the point is, I just, I really got good at screening for, screening the hard rules chicks out because I knew that that was just, Mm-hmm. not going mm-hmm. to work because like you said they would they would misattribute a lack of dick in their pussy for just no connection yeah i see what you so i like the way that you phrased it yeah you just made it part of like hey you know if, if it's if we're having fun why don't we keep hanging out right you, but they understood what you really mean right like they're you're not and saying hey yeah 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 if right if you if feel we're if we're feeling it keep you know we'll keep hanging out and then you had it preceded so that yeah i like that that's really cool did so you came up with that or did i say something when did you think about doing that so i springboarded it off of your advice of like being more direct and communicative Mm -hmm. with the girls not being afraid to just talk things out with them you know not having to be this constant coy game of you know just indirect stuff and things like that um so because i just i knew you know based on what we just talked about in the beginning i just know that it's it's usually first date or bust um, in my situation so are you mostly going on one date dates these days like you're not doing multiple it's either one or done you're yeah yeah absolutely and that was another thing you encouraged me on too was that you almost were like you need to be like strict about this like almost like a savage one two date max yeah i'm not just getting strung along or you know going on a second or third date and then getting hit with that text Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you set a rule for yourself that i have to move faster and then that actually ended up um, are you still going by that rule yeah 100 (laughs) percent. and so what these days are you Are you kind of taking it easy these days? Are you kind of having fun, something in the middle? What are you doing now? Taking it easy, uh, but might start ramping it back up. uh, Yeah. Just because I had a a good amount of a break, a little bit of a break. Yeah, yeah. Um, So did anything serious happen? Like, did you have any serious contenders since we last talked? Or was it just been casual partners and just fun? Just been kind of casual and, and like in between. So just keeping mm-hmm. things chill, but not necessarily like, you know, one and done. Yeah. So kind yeah. of like a little bit of like a rotation. Um, and and so from your experience, since you started doing this, do girls usually stick around for more than one round or is it like 50-50 or how many girls stick around for more? It's about 50-50. So some it's just a one yeah. night stand and then half will actually come back for more? You know what? No, I would actually say now that I think about it, it's probably more like 70-30 that they stick around. Yeah. Okay. That's good. So the 30% who don't, is it your choice or their choice or both? Sometimes both. Um, Sometimes it's the the classic, Oh, I'm not looking for a hookup chick. And then she's just actually looking for a hookup. (laughs) Oh, Oh, like she says it while she's on the date and then you fuck. And then that was it. Yeah. 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 Sometimes it is the truth. That is that maybe they are telling the truth, but then they made an exception for you. And they're like, okay, I had one, I had a candy bar, you know, I had my little chocolate. I need to go back on my diet <laughs> yeah. that, that, you know, that kind of can be it. But then some cases she might've just been bullshitting. It's, 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 it could be right. a mixture. Um, But then 70% retention, that's really good. That means that, you know, you're doing some things right, but you're also providing enough boyfriend value, which is interesting. Um, because that's what you were building all along for those years. So you not being a total actual fuckboy helps you with retention because it gives you like, hey, he's actually really cool to hang around with and talk to and, um, you know, spend time with. So I want to keep coming back not only for sex. Uh, did any of these girls push to have you in a relationship or do they knew the deal from? from they the did. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, they did. Um, but they, they weren't like, 
it was cool. It's almost like, I, I think you talked about this. The, the almost, the attitude was they didn't mind sharing as long as I just didn't, you know, do a typical brag and show off. I, I'm a big don't kiss and tell, but they yeah. weren't like the meeting. No, you're just going to see me and only me. Like I never got any of that. So I thought that was pretty cool. I thought that that was something that was going to happen, that they were going to start demanding exclusivity and they really have it. They just kind of enjoy the time and just kind of keep it at that. Um, and so what you just said there, that was another thing that you helped me out with really well was you were like, hey, swing all the way to fuck boy. It's, it's time to, to do that. Like mm -hmm. just kind of can the sweet persona right now and you know, the Hallmark character persona <laughs> yeah. and just yeah. go full fuck boy. And what was so interesting is because I cultivated that boyfriend side so much, like you said, even me swinging all the way to fuck boy, I didn't quite swing all the way to fuck boy, if that makes sense. Like, you know, the whole saying, you can't attain perfection, but if you shoot for it, you'll reach excellence. Mm -hmm. That was the same thing that happened with me going full fuck boy. I still retain some of those traits that, like you said, they, they wanted to stick around for. You can't drop them. They're not just going to disappear from your personality. Yeah. They're going to that, bleed that's, through. That's why you probably pushed that. Yeah. Why you pushed for me to go full fuck boy because you knew I wouldn't turn into a the player that girls actually kind of hate, but will fuck just because they're so turned on. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, you, you, I, you know, I, some guys, I actually say the opposite. Like, so, like I have a client now where I'm like, dude, I need you to kind of turn into a beta because he, he has more of like a thug personality. I'm like, dude, this shit's yeah. not working. Like you need to, you need to be more chill. And, and so I wouldn't say to him, be a fuck boy because I know it would totally come off overwhelming and, and aggressive. Whereas you, I was like, oh, there's no risk. Like you just go full fuck boy. And I know just because of who you are, you're not actually going to go full fuck boy. But the fact that you went 80% is enough, you know? And, and, and then you saw results. So yeah. Um, I think that was the main issue from the very beginning. It, it's just, you know, I think that, because you're a little bit more intelligent than a guy, you thought it was more complicated than that. And and you thought, you know, there must be something. It can't, I can't have fucked up so bad that it's that simple, you know? So it's almost like you wish it would have been a more complicated issue. Um, but because exactly. you're, but because you're such an overthinker, it actually was so simple. So then once you solved that, um, was that the key? Like, was that the Rosetta Stone? Like the 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 final translation you needed, or was there anything else that you kind of ran into along the way? It was. I mean, what helped break the mental blocks was just deciding to say fuck it and just testing things. I thought testing out a hypothesis, pretty much, right? Like, yeah. So my thing was, girls will never come home with me on the first date. So once I got the really good photos from my app for the dating apps, I had a huge pool to to really like test stuff out with, right? And so I just started like inviting girls straight over. And these were like, and I don't know. I mean, I know you can, it's easy to misread girls, but it's almost like the more raunchy chicks with like tattoos and stuff, they were the ones who were saying no to coming over. But like the regular chill chicks were kind of cool with coming straight over. So once that happened and I saw girls were willing to come like straight over, as long as I just was really chill about it and framed it in like a really relaxing way. And I live in like a cool part of town. Um, when, once I saw that happen, I was like, okay, you know, dating is the ultimate limiting beliefs buster, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's a great life lesson that, you know, you see all these limiting beliefs you have just get busted one by one, like over and over again. Like if I had a dollar every time I thought something worked one way in the dating scene and then it was changed, you know, I'd be rich. And so, yeah, once I did that, I was able to just like fully trust, you know, not that I didn't trust before, but all your teachings like came to fruition and everything about moving fast and being more aggressive and all that. Um, so, you know, that's, that's the thing that's hard for guys to understand is that even if you do trust what's being said, you'll never trust it at the level you will when you actually see it. And so how many times did it take you to finally go, okay, this is the, yeah, this is it. Like it was just, was it a few times or you had to see it a little bit more? So it was one particular chick that I like really liked and it was the same situation. Like she was really hot, like a nine and a half, 10 out of 10 Italian. Who told me, Hey, you know, what's the catch with you? You're really attractive and really cool. And I got the, I don't feel the chemistry tax from her. 
at that point I was just like, you know, you reach, there's a saying where you reach like the bottom and then just keep going towards the bottom and eventually a trap door opens and you fall through and then you, you reach your breakthrough. That's what happened with me. You know, I fell back up against the wall and said, all right, fuck it. Like time to just go all out uh-huh. and just, you know, push boundaries and, and get this shit fixed. So I said enough's enough and I just started doing it after that one particular chick. Oh, so you lost, so you lost her. That, yeah. that was okay. So, so, you know, you didn't like turn it around. Like it was just like, you know what? One too many. Yeah. This is, I've got, you know what? I don't care if I get rejected. I'm already getting rejected enough. At least I'll get rejected for exactly. being honest. Yeah. 1000%. I just stopped at that point. I was like, I'm just going to stop taking this stuff so seriously. Um, and <laughs> yeah. no, not that yeah. I didn't take it. Ser- not that I like took it much super seriously before I still tried to have fun with it but there was a point where I was like I'm just taking this too seriously like this is supposed to be fun you know girls are kind of silly like this is ridiculous that I'm taking this so seriously and it just kind of relaxed me throughout the whole thing and yeah like that was a huge break you see yeah it was it was one one too many uh losing of like pretty cool chicks right so yeah that's it I'm playing by my rules now Mm -hmm. yeah no, I, I like that. You know, uh, I had a client who, uh, I was doing day game with him over in Romania. We did a lot of sessions. Uh, we did five days a week, four day, four hours a day for a month. It was insane. And wow. I told him you had no idea what you were getting into. And he's like, no, it's okay. I got it. And within like two and a half weeks, the guy was just dead. Like we would show up and he would just be like, Okay, come on. You know, he he had the perseverance, but I could I could tell his soul was being sucked away just how many rejections. Um but the last day we were walking and we were it, there weren't any people. But, I mean, there was a lot of people, but it was all families on this like area in in Bucharest. And he was like I could tell he's disappointed and exhausted. And then I think it was the last hour we walk past these uh, performing people or, and then I turn and I just see like this smoking hot chick. Like she's totally my type. And I just see her and I go, God damn. Like I, I actually, I'm pretty sure I said, God damn, like out loud because I was like, this girl's fucking hot. And I just like turn and walk away. Cause I'm like, I know he's about to approach her. I don't even have to ask a question. And then I hear him say, Hey, excuse me. I'm like, yeah. And then I turn around. And he gives her the compliment and she's just so giddy and nervous. And he's just like ice cold, which was okay because his problem was being so excited and like, da, da, da. he's a salesman by trade. So, and a marketer. So he's got oh, okay. that like car salesman personality. And I kept trying to tell him the whole time. I was like, dude, drop that shit, drop that shit, drop that shit. It's, it's too much. And he was so exhausted, so disappointed, so beaten by all these rejections. I mean, he had some, he he got some success, but it was mostly rejections. And he was just like, yeah, okay. And then at some point she was really nervous. He's like, I don't know what else. I don't know what to say next. She's like, oh, it's okay. And he's like, yeah, I just thought you were really cute. Oh, it's okay. Ha. And then he was like, yeah, okay, cool. You know, you want to grab a coffee this time? Yeah, sure. That'd be really cool. Ha. And gave him the phone number. And he was still in such a mindset of like, I don't give a shit. And he came over. I was like, dude. That was your best fucking approach the the like in the past month. He's like, what do you mean, dude? I was so fucking nervous. He's like, I f- feel like such an idiot. Like I blew that. I'm like, no, like that was your best approach. He's like, he didn't believe me. I'm like, dude, you did great. And he's like, what do you, but how? I was so nervous. And I said, because you, you were so fucking depressed and, and, and fucked up and right rejected. State. It put you in the right state. And I was like, it's exactly what you needed, asshole. And he's like, no, dude, she's not going to respond. I'm like, trust me, she's going to respond. He's like, fine. I'm like, text that girl, you know, like an hour later. I was like, text her. Bro, she was lighting him up with texts. And he was like, okay, I believe you. It's like, yeah, dumbass. <laughs> like, I know what I'm talking about. And um, yeah, she was really excited to meet him. So different guys need different things, right? He needed something completely different from you. And, and, but you still share. I needed the same. a final straw. Yeah, yeah. But everyone needs a final straw. That's the thing that's common. You're gonna have a different key, but there's gonna be a time where you go, okay, whatever I've been doing up until now, 
clearly is not fucking working. So let me try something drastically different. Worst case scenario, I continue to get rejected, but at least I changed up the strategy. Yeah. So that was the big. So that's the biggest thing. If I could sum it all up into one thing, it was let me play by my rules versus theirs. And you gotta you gotta give and take and compromise. But I would make sure it was a compromise a lot of the time. Yeah. You know, like if if it was a no to coming straight over, okay, we're gonna meet by a, a bar, you know, right by my place. Right. That's that. I'm not driving 30 minutes to see you. Right. You know, yeah. Somewhere else. Yeah. That 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 was another thing. I think you were always trying so hard. You were like. You know, I remember when you went out to meet that girl at the pool or something, um, and she was the really sassy girl. I remember that. And then you would just keep, like, plowing away, whereas oh, yeah. now you were like, no, if anything goes above a certain, like, point, I'm going to go home. Dude, you it's, know, almost, I'll... it's almost like they hate you for, like, supplicating to their their idea, almost. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, you know what I, I mean? hate like... the fact that you gave in to that. Yeah, not not consciously, but subconsciously, because I could tell they were sassier if I was like agreeing to, okay, I'll go meet you and your friend, you know, out at the beach or whatever. I could tell if I like supplicated, you know, fully, like there was a, and that could be, you know, again, correlation and causation thing, but like it, there's pretty consistently a worse attitude. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's 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 real, and and you you made a good point. It's not conscious. They're not thinking, okay, I'm gonna get him to do what I want, but then I'm gonna hate him for it. It's like no, they genuinely wanted you to to do that for them. Like maybe it was more convenient for you to meet them, but then once they did it, usually what happens is they feel power, and when most people feel power, they let it get to their heads, and especially when they liked you so much because you were really hot or good looking or smart or charismatic, whatever it is they looked like liked about you. And it was like, oh wow, I got this guy to come all the way out here for me. Like, ooh, I must be. And then she lets it get to her fucking head. And then she just like basically abuses that power. And then you're a nice guy who's like, okay, you know, I don't mind, you know, going out of my way for someone. Like, of course. But then you're like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna start acting like I'm a 10 out of 10, you know. And then let's see what happens. I'm not going to be it. But, but here's the thing. You weren't a total asshole in the first place. So when you think I'm going to be a total asshole, it only puts you here, not here. It doesn't, you don't shift all the way there, but it was just enough where like girls will respect you. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It was like, I kept like the same like interaction in person with a little bit more flirting and teasing, but you know, the added dimension of being pretty strict about following my date rules like pretty mm -hmm. damn strict mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i like that yeah you set these hard limits for yourself yeah and texting too so that you were like hey just simplify everything so i, I just got into a huge habit of if we, every time i'd read and this will make your brain hurt i mean that's it's not easy but every time i'd send a text i'd be like okay how can i how can i push this down from four words and get it succinct to one word yeah. and like just literally simplifying it, making sure that text block is the same size or less than hers. Yeah. That might seem like kind of like red pillish, um, but, but it's not, you know what I mean? Like I'm not of any pill type. Like it's just almost like common sense, you know, the, the over investment, you know, under investing thing. That's just like a kind of like a real thing. So I just simplified my text and made it as succinct and getting the point across, you know, best that I could. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, that's really so. Was that from my? Was that from no? My texting book wasn't out by then, so that was just advice I was giving. No, just you. personal just, coaching. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just like, hey, simplify it. But that is something I included in my texting book. You know, where you literally need to act like a writer who's writing a book, and your book is eight hundred pages, and you're like, okay, <laughs> I need to get this down to like four hundred pages because whatever I'm saying in eight hundred pages, I can definitely say in less words, and. And and yeah, you 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 followed the advice perfectly, and you saw that the texting reception also went up, and that the oh yeah 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 big time yeah, but it's also the same thing. It's effort. It's okay. The same way I was putting, I was trying way too hard in person and taking it too seriously. Well, this texting, all these complicated long messages where I'm being way too OCD, I'm clearly taking it too seriously. So I need to 
do the opposite and go hardcore. Like I, if I can say this in one fucking word, I'm going to say it in one word and it all ended up paying off in the same way. So now that you found yourself here, what's your, what do you feel like is your next step? Or do you feel like, you know what? I just need to optimize what I'm already doing. Yeah. I don't know. It's tough because screening was the, you know, big tool that helped really blow my results wide open. So I don't know if I want to go into the, Oh, you know, now I, I need to try and get pretty much every girl or just keep things simple and just kind of keep screening for optimal, you know, chance for success. Um, if I had more free time, like if I wasn't dealing with business stuff and things like that, I would probably go ahead and try and, and, and get every girl, even if they don't fit my screening criteria very well. Like even just if they as a are, challenge. You know, just as a challenge. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, the one group that I, I have trouble with that um, still, and, and this is one that like even, you know, I think Chase, like he has an LMR article. He's like, hey, you probably best to avoid these types are the kind of the revamp reformed party girls. Mm. Those are really tough because they, you know, I've had situations where I've had them very aroused and they're just so good at still stonewalling things from getting sexual. Yeah. So the reformed party chicks are very difficult. Um, so I'm like, that could be another one to try and try to go up. But I don't know if it's worth the headache or if it's even possible. Yeah, those the, that's hard because, you know, they they've already done it so much or it's like, I mean, it's exciting. Yeah. But when you've had it, you know, a bunch of times, you, you can say no, you know, like you're, you're not when you first taste it's something. <laughs> yeah, it's not scarce. Like when you first taste your first cookie, you're going to be like, oh, thank God, I want cookies. Right. But then you've been a cookie addict all your life. And it's like, hey, I need to lose some weight. You know, if you've got cookies in front of you, yeah, of course, you really like it because you've been conditioned to like it. But you've had it so much. There's actually an opposite effect where you actually have a tolerance. Like, I know what it's going to taste like. I know I'm going to feel guilty afterwards, right? And I'm just better off saying no. Plus, she has abundance, right? She already knows. She's had every type of every color type of dick, every size of dick, you know, every type of personality. She's like, ah, you know what? Yeah, he's hot. I need but... a wine and diner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I'm looking for something serious. And plus, her needs to be a mother and have a relationship are so much stronger than her desire for sex. So, um, yeah, that's that's a that is a difficult demographic. But it's cool that you're seeing it. You're seeing it as I'm playing a video game that I I just want to play for achievements now. And that's when you that's when you start having fun. When you just start to see, you know what? I want to see how good I can get. Just for, fuck it. You know, like, let me see what I can do. Right? Yeah, not drowning. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're not in need of a life raft. Yeah. Yeah. And that's where, and that's where you were because I think that, I think, I think it wasn't so much you were in a drought and you were desperate. I never got that sense for you. I think it was an intellectual conundrum to you. I think it was... Like my brain this hurts so doesn't bad, doesn't yeah. make any fucking sense. I don't get it. Why do these girls keep fucking saying they don't feel connection? And I was so totally cool. I didn't try to push for sex. What's going on? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, none of my friends were having this problem. Um, and I, I don't, I need to be careful about how I, how I word this, but... The, just be arrogant. Just say it. <laughs> I'm, I'm better than them, but I wasn't getting pussy. <laughs> I was getting much better reactions than them. That's what yeah. you go out. The girls would come up to me and be like, you know, picking me over them, which would make them get, you know, kind of start to not like going out with me. <laughs> but then they would get they would get better results than me. So that that's where I was like, what the fuck? Like I'm getting all the attention. When we go out and stuff like that but they're the ones that are, are getting, you know, they're the ones that are closing. And so that's where I was like, wow, this is, this makes no fucking sense and flies in the face of everything that I've heard. I, I like, I had no choice, but to like, I'm um, the coaching because of, I don't think I would have, I don't think there's any way I would have figured it out on my own without the type of direction, maybe in like 15 years, like trial and error, being unemployed and doing nothing, but, you know, <laughs> pursuing yeah. women maybe yeah. then i would have figured it out but yeah you know, that, the coaching helped you know shorten that timeline tremendously yeah you know yeah well i'm happy i'm happy you didn't have to quit your job just to fuck his girls <laughs> dude it's a full-time job like trying to figure it out on your own like you know you have to like you have a ph you go and get a phd and yeah how to seduce women <laughs> yeah yeah no it's it's 
it's it's good you you got losers like me who spent their whole life doing it and then we're like oh yeah hey i remember i did that back in 2017 i was having this issue or oh i had a client who had this you know that's that's the entire point of coaching is i'm gonna pay someone to cut my learning curve in half just like anything else like i hire coaches for video games that i play why well this guy has 15,000 hours in it and i have 6,000, so he's gonna cut my shit in half perfect or you know business coaching uh, anything so that's that's definitely the advantage of coaching um so marketing time if you are interested in coaching and you kind of see how you know kyle's problems were solved by someone who could see from the outside who's either been there personally or had a client who was there and fixed it for them and knows oh this is your particular problem because everyone has a particular problem and everyone has a particular thing that works for them too like everyone has their own seductive signature their you know their particular signature that's very unique but they don't know how to fully unlock it to make themselves actually get the girls who already like them with their personality and they just need to shift a little few things like like with your texting, I just need to text less or I just need to move really fast or I just need to screen girls who aren't having all these walls about hooking up with me quickly. And once I just did those few things, the floodgates opened and that's how I see coaching. Yes, in some ways, it's this big improvement journey and, you know, you're grinding and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, sure. But really, the most important thing is, hey, there's these very simple things that you need to change. They're going to change slowly, but if you just focus and bolt down on these few things, you're going to see tremendous results instead of trying to, what you're already doing right now is, I need to fix this, I need to fix that, I need to fix this, I need to fix that. It's like, okay, that will help, right? And so those all had positive ramifications in the end, but really it's these main three problems, but they were behind you in the corner on the bookshelf and you never even looked in that direction. That's what that 15 years of searching would have had to been was, okay, there's a, there's a book in this room that's going to tell me the secret, but I don't know which one because it's a fucking library. And I'm like, oh, hey, it's that volume seven over there. And it's like, oh, really? It's the last one I would have fucking picked. So that's what coaching does for you. So if you're interested in that, there will be a link in the description if you're watching this on YouTube or if you're watching this on the website, there should be a link below. Sign up for coaching, give your information. We'll have a consultation call. We'll see what your problem is and we'll discuss all the details and specifics and uh and then you can be like Kyle, where you know you had a problem you had it fixed and it's not always quick like i don't want guys to be under this illusion like even when we finished coaching it still took you about a year a year and a half before i remember i remember very specifically you sent me a text and you were like i did it i i got it you know you, you were like i figured it out and you know he had to do it his own way um because you know sometimes people just have to go through their own journey right um, but eventually he got it. And then the time is going to pass anyways. You know, some guy might say, oh my God, you know, that's so long, but it's like, well, that time's already going to go past. And if you don't spend it improving or working on your problem, then, you know, you're still going to have that problem in two years. So he, at least, you know, he spent the money to get the information quicker and then spent the time also implementing the advice. But then at the end of the day, it got fixed. And now girls are just kind of okay for you. You feel okay focusing on other things. And then you're like, I know when I want to go back to getting girls, like right now, you said, I kind of feel it. I can just go back. That's the biggest thing, dude. Like before when I was like, you know, and on a Friday night or whatever, I would feel this intense sense of despair. Cause I, I didn't know, you know, what I was doing or what was wrong. Now that that's clear, you know, I'm spending, you know, a lot of nights just chilling, listening to podcasts, reading books, you know, my introvert site, uh, side of me and watching movies just kind of doing what i want and that sense of despair that chronic background annoyance and frustration is completely gone eradicated and you know the, the trap that i fell i fell into a little bit of a trap too where you know I, at one point i was like god why does this, this have to be so hard and i just want to say like enjoy that process to like people watching because it's it's the it's actually a, a benefit it's positive you know if you're a girl you're kind of born you know, either hot or not. And that's a big, that's going to determine their dating life pretty hardcore, but yeah. we can change it. The price you have to pay for changing it though, is it's going to take a while. It's, it's very difficult. This is not something that's easy. Um, I learned that even though people kept telling me, Hey, you, if I looked like you, someone told me if I looked like you, I'd get laid every night. I was like, that's not like that. 
buddy, yeah. like at all. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's a hard process, but it pays off. And that's the benefit of, you know, being a man is you can, we can change your situation. So. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, it's never like what guys think. Like I had a live stream last night and some fucking dude came in and he was like, it's all about your looks. It's all about genetics. Stop lying. And I'm like, I bet this dude doesn't have a single friend who's actually a, like a good looking high value guy. He just sees it from the outside and has no fucking clue what it's like. Everyone has issues, you know? And if someone doesn't ha- have issues, it's because they worked on it or they fixed it, you know, or they had like, they had the, the perfect combination. They they had a dad who was like taught game, who was already kind of a player himself. They had, you know, they were on a sports team. So they were like super masculine, you know, they had two older sisters. So they're super comfortable being around girls. Like, you know, at some point he, and then he's still going to have trouble, you know, maybe he'll have a girl that's interested in him, but he has relationship issues, right? Just look at fucking Hollywood. Right? All these fucking famous Brad actors Pitt. and shit. Right? Dates the most beautiful woman in the world and then gets totally fucking, you know, becomes an alcoholic and this and that, you know, and she probably was, you know, doing whatever. It's like, well, okay, so I wouldn't want to trade places with him. I don't, I wouldn't want to have had multiple kids and a fucked up marriage with that chick. No, thank you. I would rather be an incel. You know, it's like, so there's 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 give and take with everyone. Everyone has their own issues. So you have to figure out your own particular solution to the problem. And and that's what coaching does. So yeah. Was there anything else you wanted to add? Any any last comments? Any No, I think we covered everything, man. Like do you you think there's any other like no, no. part you wanted to no, I got yeah. it. no, I think I think that I think that we got it. I think it was pretty I think it was pretty good. So I appreciate you uh coming by i know our schedules were not aligning for a while um but it seems that you're doing better and i'm I'm glad everything's working out for you and uh i'm excited to see where your your new spring awakening uh brings because now you're ready to focus on having a little fun um so i'm excited to see what happens when kyle comes out of hibernation so i'm sure you'll but, so I, I will say actually that your memory is amazing. Like you recalled stuff from like a long time ago, just in this conversation, like specific scenarios. Oh yeah. So like that's a <laughs> that's an incredible coaching trait to have. Like yeah, you know, because if you're constantly having to remind you of things, and and so that that prompted me to want to bring that up. That mm-hmm. I never had to remind you of things. Every coaching session we had was like super productive because I didn't have to remind you of this, remind you of that. You just remembered it like mm-hmm. perfectly well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's I, I don't know where I got it from, but but thank you. Yeah, thank you. I I I think because I'm interested. I think I I, I find people's yeah. stories fascinating. Like I remember that time where you went to the 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 pool girl and she was being really sassy and bitchy. And I remember the girl who jumped at you in the elevator uh, after you know you tried to hook up with her on the couch. I remember the uh, I remember the bisexual lesbian girl who you know um, she was like you know I'm a lesbian, but then I, I'll hook up with you. And then I remember that these girls were like, oh, my God, I think, you know, I could never have you all alone. You you need to be shared with the world. You know, like all the girls need a taste of you, you know. I remember, <laughs> yeah, I even I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, I, I remember all, all these things because I think they're I think they're fascinating because it's so interesting to see that, you know. I think, I yeah, I, I just think it's fascinating because I have a passion for it. So um, but uh but yeah, I I remember most cl- I very rarely forget about a client's thing even years later. So, um so yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you, Cap. Yeah, absolutely, man. All right. So, I guess we'll wrap it up. Uh thanks for coming by. Um like I said, links should be in the description or below if you want to sign up for coaching. And then, of course, I have my courses where I do teach some of this stuff. I have my texting book, What She Really Means. I have my day game course, Meet Girls Everywhere. And then I do have my college book that I'm currently rewriting so that I'll be re-released. Um, but the texting thing that Kyle brought up is super important um, that I go over in my texting book. Like texting is a thing that almost every guy fucks up and he does it horribly. So I have a book. It's super cheap in the description below. Just get it. It'll give you everything that you need because you probably suck at texting. And then if you're having trouble meeting girls, um, what's moving? Oh, it's my cat. I was like, I keep seeing something moving in the background. <laughs> and I was like, oh, hi, Nana. Um, but it's blurred. So it's like, what the fuck? Uh, and then you actually have to meet. Oh, yeah. How are you meeting most girls? 
Well, how were you meeting most girls? Was it uh, d- dating apps? Dating apps and night games. So I, night game. something interesting I was doing with night game was I wasn't trying to pull them that night. I would just use night game to get numbers because I, I realized that it, it just doesn't work out for me. I'm really tired by like one, two in the morning and just, yeah. it just wasn't working trying to pull them. So I just go and get numbers and just use like my follow-up texting sequence. Yeah. So what you just said there, the texting, 1000% super critical. I, I thought that like, you know, because they were warm with me in person, it would be that way over text. Not really. It's a totally different ball game where you're starting from scratch completely. Yeah. Yeah. I found that out too. Yeah. That's good. So it's good that you weren't only doing online dating. You you were actually getting some real life um uh interactions and and so did you ever try any day game, by the way? Did you ever yeah, I did. Um, okay. I got a pretty good, decent, walkable spot here. And okay. yeah, it works great. I, I, okay. Another surprising thing, I just sometimes, you know, they're a little bit nervous in those interactions and, you know, they're not like super smooth, but they're still effective, very receptive and willing yeah. to hang out. Yeah. 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 So that's what I advise for most guys because night game can be a bit daunting for some guys, especially if they haven't gotten into the party scene, you know, in their college years or so tough. Uh, yeah early adult years. So if you're not used to that day game is a very good introduction. It's very safe and relaxing. Uh, well, at first it'll be a little nerve wracking, but that's what that course meet girls everywhere is designed to do is to get guys just out there right now. You can go pretty much anytime. Um, and you can start meeting girls today. So check out meet girls everywhere in the description below it teaches you the simple process to meet girls. And then once you obviously get their phone number after asking them out, you need that texting book and then you set up the date and then you can go with one date, um, Chase's course on how to actually run the date. And then of course, coaching. So all that's in the description below marketing stuff over. Thank you for coming, Kyle. Appreciate it. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, man. It's good seeing you. Good seeing you too. And I guess I'll end it there. All right. See you guys.